In this episode of Super Seicento, I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. Hello, you lot. Miller Corner here, and welcome back to Super Seicento and to my garage. Actually, the Super Seicento isn't in here, but before we get to the car itself, we've got some work to do. Now, turbocharging the car is imminent. We are going to get the car back here soon and start working on turbocharging the little yellow nugget. But before we do that, I want to get the suspension sorted because all the hooting I did last summer highlighted a couple of issues with the car. We're going to do the suspension upgrades like a good mullet. That's business at the front and party at the rear. And we're going to start at the business end, the front end, because for me, the turn end of the car is great. It's really sharp and it does go in when you turn it, but not quite as responsively as I'd like. I'm very picky. I like a car to be fingertippy sharp and there is just a tiny little bit of slop in it and also a little bit of roll when you're going around a long tight corner. The solution to that, because you've already got coilovers on the car in my case, is to look at your suspension bushes because standard bushes, they're made out of rubber. They're flexible, they're soft. That makes them better for comfort and better for refinement, but not as good if you want sharp B-road bashing handling. I've got a lovely pack here which as you might be able to see by the tape on it are from the masters at powerflex now to be completely transparent here i haven't been sponsored by them these weren't free but they were discounted for me to use on the super seicento and frankly it's an honor to be able to work with powerflex because they produce some awesome products they're used on race cars track cars drift cars it's really good stuff and what these are if you didn't know are suspension bushes made of polyurethane which is effectively plastic. The main properties of polyurethane over rubber are that it's much harder. It doesn't flex, it's not as soft, and that does mean your car is going to ride a little bit harder. You will probably get some more vibrations, but on the other hand, it's going to be firmer, it's going to be tighter, it's not going to roll as much, and it's going to respond better to little bumps in the road when you're sending it down a B road. I've got these for both ends of the front wishbones. I haven't got any for the rear because I've got a separate plan for the rear of the car, which you'll see very soon, but for the front end of the car, if you're just replacing your existing ones, it can be difficult particularly if they've been on there for a long time they're logged with mud and dirt and all kinds of crap that makes them difficult to dig out my solution to that problem is to forget about the front wishbones entirely because I've bought new ones. You can get brand new Seicento front wishbones for, I think these were 35 quid for both. And they come with the rubber bushes here and here and brand new ball joints as well, which is always nice. And it means I haven't got 15 year old bushes to try and dig out to get the lovely Powerflex ones in. So first things first then, let's get these ones out and then we can get these ones in. Is that on do? Yeah. We want it on do. Removing the standard bushes proves to be the most difficult bit, even when they're not covered in mud and dirt. One bush gets lots of holes drilled through it with the special Maplin drill to break it up, before being tapped out with a hammer and chisel. There's a, there's a joke there about bushcraft, but I'm not going to make one. The other is clamped in the bench vice before being twisted, bent and eventually swivelled off of the wishbone. There are other ways to get bushes off, but this is how we did it. Do whatever works best for you, but try not to damage the wishbone or bend any mounting points. Right, so we've got the standard rubber bushes out of the brand new wishbone, and now it's time to get the first of our beautiful poly bushes in. Now, the thing to remember is which way around the bushes go when they're in there, particularly when they're one-sided like this, you cannot get this wrong or it may well cock things up. And these are quite hard to get out because they're so much harder, you can't push against them like you can with the rubber ones. I happen to know because I've already done the other wishbone that this bush is gonna be going in this way with the kind of bulbous big flat end facing that way. Now you get two things in the packet, you get the bush with its metal rod that goes inside hey, hey and you also get this which is special poly bush silicon grease because these things are that much harder than standard rubber ones it's not very easy to make them slide in I'll grow up and then stop them from squeaking once they're in there. I've got a mate with a fully poly bush car and he says if you don't grease them up, they squeak like a bugger after about six months. And first of all, you just want to put some around the bush. So just squirt it all the way around there like that and then just give it a good old rubbing with your finger. I have heard horror stories that putting some poly bushes on from other brands or in certain cars because the shape of them is an absolute pain in the ass. But these ones all greased up looking lovely. There is the collar it's got to go in. There's your poly bush. Keep the metal rod separate for now and literally just grab it here and 
it in. You might notice it does still kind of move in there and that's because this rod goes in there to keep it hard to stop it flexing and popping out. So we just literally need to grab this and shove it in there. But once again, a little bit of grease doesn't hurt anyone. Just make sure that it doesn't squeak. And it's well worth keeping a little packet of this grease spare. You can even buy more from PowerFlex, I believe, just to make sure that you don't have squeaky bushes because no one likes a squeaky bush. That's all greased up. And this one, we just line it up with the hole there and push her in. Might take a little bit of persuasion to get it all the way in. And that at least is in. You can kind of see around there. That is our front, front wishbone, outer bush, whatever that section's called, in, polybushed, ready to go. I'm not joking, it really is that simple. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. Now we're gonna swap the wishbone round in the bench vise to do that one. It's important to note, if you are gonna do this like I am by holding it in a bench vise with a brand new wishbone, adjust your vise in such a way that you're not clamping down on the ball joint. You can see down there, if you damage your ball joint, you are in for a world of swearing and you don't want to have to replace what is actually a brand new ball joint on your brand new wishbone do you now for this poly bush it's actually even simpler because you don't even have a metal rod it just looks like that and it goes on there to then push up against the car and then obviously when it's on the car you'll see we'll get a big bracket on there that clamps it in place keeps it rigid once again you want to get the shaft all greased just so it slides in nice stops niggering at the back if you're doing this on a Seicento or a Cinquecento, this is not going to bottom out. You're not going to see that metal pin right at the end of there. There is going to be a little bit of a gap because there is a recess in there. You can kind of see it is not going to bottom out. So don't worry if it doesn't. There should be a little gap which you'll be able to see. Slot it over the shaft and give it a bit of a push. Oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much on. Don't panic, it's not supposed to sit flush with there. If you push too hard and break stuff, that's on you, I'm afraid. I've already told you not to do that. And once we're done sorting the front, I've got something rather special to sort the back. I've said before that I am a big fan of the TA Technics coilovers on my Seicento. Yes, they're not really race ready, but for the price you pay for them, you really can't complain. They make the car handle so much better. They really don't ride bad at all. And they kill that body roll that Seicentos are infamous for. The rear shocks of that set is kind of a weak point of them. Give it a year and a few thousand miles, particularly on rough British roads, the rear shocks do start Start to give out they start groaning and squeaking and they go a bit soft and frankly it makes the car worse to drive mine are well past that point now they make noise whenever you're going over pretty much any bump and as you probably saw in my Seicento hooning video the car does kangaroo quite a lot when you go over pretty much any dip in the road the back of the car starts to wander and frankly it's not very pleasant instead I've gone with Spax rear shocks now if you've been modifying cars in the UK for about the last 50 years I would say you're probably familiar with the name Spax they do cars for race cars, rally cars, hill climb cars. You might notice that these are quite short and that's because these are the shortened lowered shocks that Spax do. For cars that have been substantially lowered over stock like my one, probably 40 mil or more of a drop. If you haven't lowered your car that substantially or you've got a standard ride height car, they do do standard length ones for you as well. But for me, with a lowered car, these are going to be more ideal. You might notice that little valve there, and that's because these shocks have got adjustable damping built into them. You turn this little valve down here anti-clockwise to make them softer, or clockwise to make them firmer. And that means you've got adjustable damping on the fly, without having to take them out, without having to change your shocks or anything like that, you can set the car up exactly how you want it in terms of how hard it is and how it responds to bumps. Right, we've got these for the back, new polybush wishbones for the front. Without further ado, let's get to the workshop and fit them. I start by unbolting the knackered rear shocks, a task which, thanks to us being too damn lazy to find a ratchet, takes about three weeks. Copper grease on there, look, copper grease. Yeah, well, we're professionals, we are. And of course, we're applying copper grease to every bolt before it goes back in. See, that's why we're professionals. Well, you're professional. I'm professional at something. I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> A transmission jack takes just enough load off the rear shocks to make the lower bolts easier to remove. And with the upper bolts eventually undone, the old rear shocks can go and the new Spax ones are adjusted to match each other. There we go. Shocking. That's right on, yes, yeah, so you go one, two, yeah. there we go, so that's two off, that will be like a proper, that'll be like a touring car. Before being bolted on, I'll of course adjust the damping once I've driven the car on some perfect British roads. 
With the new rear shocks fitted and looking mad, the exhaust can go back on as well now the undersealing is finished, followed by the rear bumper complete with a new grill. Once the rear lights have been sealed to prevent leaks and also refitted, we can move on to the front. First the ball joints have to be undone, which given they're so tight that only whacking an attached spanner with a hammer will undo them, takes a while. Oh you b Bloody Jesus God and Christ. I'd just like to thank Jeremy Clarkson for teaching me this trick, if you can't make it work hit it with a hammer. Eventually I get bored and bearing in mind we've got new ball joints anyway, come up with a time saving solution. With a good chunk of thread exposed, dad cracks out an air hacksaw which eats through the thread before I finish the job off with a spanner. Ha! Yeah. Then it's just a matter of taking out some anger to get the ball joint out. Yeah, Hammers solve all things. Most things, some things, that thing. Now bored of manual tools, we use the air gun to help remove the various bolts and brackets holding the wishbone in place before threading it out over the anti-roll bar and consigning it and its standard rubber bushes to the bin. There we go. We can break that and make a wish. Finally, the polybush new wishbone can go in. With the bracket over the D-bush, yes that really is what it's called, grow up, it gets threaded over the anti-roll bar. I then copper grease up what I think is the bolt for the front inner bush. That's so obviously not the right bolt, you idiot. There's a big long one in here. Where does this one go then? When you actually pick up the right bolts, fitting polybush wishbones is no different to normal ones. Bolt the brackets, mounts and ball joint up tightly, make sure everything clears each other and that the grease is on hand if they start squeaking in the future. It's worth getting the wheel alignment checked too, which I'll do when the car goes in for an MOT. But for now, the Super Seicento suspension overhaul is done. And there we have it, creaky and fairly knackered TA Technics rear shocks replaced with those awesome SPAX adjustables, new wishbones in with some Powerflex poly bushes in as well. Now obviously I don't really know how the car drives yet because it hasn't even moved off the ramp yet, but I am uber keen to see how much flatter and how much more planted the little nugget is when we get it on a mad twisting B road and then of course when we put some turbo power behind it to really get it flying. For now though, I'm absolutely absolutely disgusting, knackered and very hungry. So I'm off to get refreshed and some dinner. I'll catch you very soon everybody. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Home time.